Hi friends, welcome back to the channel Learning Literature Online. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe it and hit the bell icon so that you won't miss the regular updates from this channel. Today, let us go through a poem on the move by Tom Gunn. This poem from Tom Gunn's second collection is most famous and best known of all postwar poems. In this poem, the aimless threatening movement of motorcycle gang becomes metaphor for sense of alienation and lack of purpose in the life of modern man. Through this poem, Tom Gunn wants everyone to know the veil of modern invention. Through the poem, the poet brings out the contemporary issues of 1950s. The title itself is intended to bring out the lifestyle of motorcycle gang of post-war period. Tomkin, original name was Thompson William Gill, who was born on August 29, 1929, in Kent, England, and died on April 25, 2004, San Francisco, California, U.S., who was English poet whose voice is notable for his choice language and counterculture themes. He was son of a successful London journalist. He attended University College School in London and Trinity College in Cambridge. The poem On the Move by Tom Gunn. The blue jay scuffling in the bushes follows some hidden purpose and the guest of birds that spreads across the field. The wheeling shallows has nested in the trees and undergrowth, seeking their instinct or their poise or bath. One moves with an uncertain violence under the desk thrown by a baffled sense or the dull thunder of approximate words. In the first stanza, the poet compares human being, especially gangs of 1950s, with the birds. He compares movement of human being with the movement of birds. Both human being and birds are making some movements. So he is analyzing the two movements. The blue jay which scuffles in the bushes has some hidden need in doing so. It has some purpose. The group of birds that are flying across the fields has some intention. Swallows have made their nest in the trees and low level bushes. So every bird has been guided, has been led by some instinct or they are acting according to their need and purpose. They have specific need in doing, in making their movements. Now the poet brings the motorcycle gangs into the poem saying that one moves with an uncertain violence. They are going on very speed. Raging violence as it may lead to accidents also. They are driving so crazy. They are mad in doing so as he is totally confused and the dust is raised and fallen on him itself. Dust is raised and fallen on him 
itself. See, the result of what he is making is experienced by even by himself. So, the first sense provides a contrasting nature of human being with words. The craziness of speed of movement is being compared with the movements made by birds. On motorcycles up the road they come, small, black, as flies hanging in heat. The boys, until the distance thrown them forth, they hum burgers to thunder held by calf and thigh, in goggles, dent in personality, in gleaming jackets trophied with the dust. They strap in doubt by hiding it, robust and almost hear a meaning in their noise. In this stanza, poet is closely watching this motorcycle gang. He tries to project a picture of long shot to close shot of motorcycle gangs coming from a long and top of the road to nearer. He sees the gangs coming. As he sees the gangs coming, he compares them with flies. When he sees them in a long distance, they are small creatures, like flies in a black color. That is what he is thinking of this motorcycle gang when they are in distance. They are just like flies when they come nearer. When they come nearer, the distant sound of humming turns into thunder sound with the racing sounds coming from the vehicle. It is just like thunder. It is like thunder coming from vehicle. He says they are driving them held by calf and thigh. See, by this the poet is explaining how the gangs look like. They even wear goggles to protect them, not to be disturbed by the dust coming from their vehicle. See, they are wearing this goggle to protect them. He is saying them, he is saying them what they are impersonal. They are impersonalities. The shining jackets are turned into dusty. See, so he is saying that it is being trophied by, trophied with the dust. Their sound is unbearable, but they can hear meaning in the created noise. Even though it is so unbearable, they are finding a meaning in their created noise. Exact conclusion of their hardiness has no shape yet, but from known whereabouts they ride direction where the tires press. They scare a flight of birds across the field. Much that is natural to the will must yield. Men manufacture both machine and soul and use what they imperfectly control to dare a future from the taken road. In this stanza, the poet explains how they are disturbing the natural life and how they are the repercussions of scientific invention. He says that even though they are riding day and night, there is no fatigue to them in their journeys. They do not know where they are going. They go where the tires press and they do not know where they will live, where they will stay. The birds have their nests, but motorcyclists have no shelter, at least like the birds. They travel where the tires go. They travel without purpose. They have no specific purpose while they are traveling. Even in the movement, they are frightening the birds flying across the field. 
these birds follow their instinct and needs but these gangs are against the birds who follow their instinct and needs their destination also is not known here the poet tomkin is bringing scientific invention especially machines he says that men made machines as well as their personalities men had made their machines and their personalities and men are using what they cannot perfectly use this is what this stanza bring man is using the machines developed by the men itself imperfectly they only consider their present they are not ready to think they are leaving the future to the fate it is part solution after all one is not necessarily discard on it or damned because half animal one lacks direct instinct because one wakes a float on movement that divides and breaks one joins the movement in a valueless world choosing it till both hurler and the herd one moves as well always toward toward in the fourth stanza the poet speaks of bike man's condition why he is so so crazy he says that he is half animal so he should not be cursed or condemned because he has to shape his future he cannot act by pure instinct only as he is half animal while the birds are full animal they can act by their instinct man has to make decision these decisions are difficult and helps them if he joins a gang or groundswell of human change these gangs or while he is in society will give him moral support and will give him some values with which we can identify him so while we are or while the bike men are on gang or in society or in group it will be helpful to form some norms some decision as he is half animal he cannot be cursed or condemned they only love present going speed it is violent speed disturbs the flight of birds and the human beings who are with destination so while the uh, motorcyclists are going very fast they are disturbing the nature the speed the speed attracts accident and loss respectively the poet says that no one sleep as he is saying one wakes up fraud on movement one lives in this world without values there is no need of destination for them it is always traveling towards towards a minute holds them who have come to go the self defined astride the created will they burst away the towns they travel through are home for neither bird nor holiness for birds and saints complete their purposes at worst one is in motion and at best reaching no absolute in which to rest one is always near by not keeping still in the last stanza tom can is explaining how these bike men travel and where they would be lived to they sit astride and speed up their vehicles to unknown destiny they travel through towns where there is no nest for birds and homes for holiness it is because saints and birds have purposes they travel in that direction but these speedy motor gangs do not have purpose 
Hence, they are traveling away from them. They say they should be on the move always. They want to enjoy the speed without any intention. They are mad with dust. These do not bother them. They are at the worst while they are on their move. They are in continuous motion. Thus, they are always nearer to the final rest that is death.